And welcome to Team Titan's product demo of our home maintenance app, app, Tasker. Let me start by introducing the development team as you see on your screen. Team members are Art Trelevin, Ben Eisenstein, Chloe Sylvester, and myself, Donna Dempsey, along with our product owner and scrum master, Tony Enerson. For more informa information about each of us, please click on our photos in the one pager. The link was just provided in the chat. In developing an app, we wanted to solve a problem with a design thinking approach and a viable business outcome. A problem we saw was that homeowners, both new and old, had trouble recalling when tasks were last done. New homeowners might not even know where to begin to maintain their home. People who manage several homes might lose track of what was done. Time passes and recurring tasks are missed by all. These oversights can lead to disrepair, disrepair and expensive bills, but basic home maintenance might have prevented these outcomes. Many of us can identify with these situations, but what can we do? Our solution is Tasker, a recurring home maintenance app built with data analytic capabilities and service provider recommendations. It is not just another calendar or to-do list. The value of Tasker is in providing you with a list of recommended maintenance tasks based on industry standards for items in your home and also offering the ability to create and modify tasks as required to suit your schedule. You finish a task, task and the next occurrence will automatically be scheduled into your calendar. Previous service providers and reports of costs are also available to you. You will receive weekly email reminders of upcoming tasks and you can share appointments with different calendars. So now let's get started with the demo. So we start at the, dem uh, we start at the landing page and as we scroll down, you can see some of the features that are offered by our app. At the bottom is a link to a maintenance recurrent schedule, which is also available to non-members and will be shown later in the demo. From here, we'll go up to the top of the page and we'll, we could sign up to join the community. So this is where we fill in our information, but today we're going to actually log in and use a pre-existing um, account. So then we'll log in and here we go. So this is the default view of our calendar, which is the list view. So you can see um, in the list, there are different colors. There's the gray for, uh, gray for completed tasks, red for overdue tasks, and blue for active tasks in the future. The app was built to be responsive. And so here we can show some examples of what it would look like in your mobile view. While in the mobile view, we can also explore other calendar views. So I'll let, I'll let him show you a few. I'll we'll look at a few uh, of the uh, views. And while when we get settled, there we go. So now we can look at a month view, calendar, um, weekly or daily view. So it depends on how full your calendar is how you'd like to see your tasks. We also at the top have the ability to filter through time using the arrow buttons, sorry. And then we also have the ability to filter. So as you can see, we can filter by the number of homes we have or by the status of the tasks. And we also have, this is, this is a session task, but we also have the ability to have a permanent task set, which will be shown later in our demo. From here, we move on to more calendar functionality. So let's say um, successfully acquired another home to manage and let's add that new home into our calendar. Um, so let's click on adding a new home and our nickname will be the White House. And let's pick a symbol to easily identify it. And our address is number one, Presidential Road Northwest. City is located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and let's go ahead and put in the postal code. Building uh, type is a house. The floor space is 55,000 square feet. It's a very big house, and the year built was um, 1792. And uh, we're we're managing the home from today. That's the date and time right now. And let's pick a few uh, default. Uh, feature uh, items for this house. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and pick a few. And let's also add our own item, our own custom item and tasks, uh, say presidential pool. And the task is to clean it every 60 days. And let's go ahead and add that item and save this new home. And you can also see that we can uh, edit or uh, remove the custom items um, if we feel like it. Uh, let's, yeah, let's save it. 
And here, if taking care of the White House is too much for you to handle, you can also deactivate another home and hand that responsibility off to somebody else. Okay, let's go back to the calendar to see all of the new um, default tasks that have um, been made for us. And uh, can we find where the, the new custom task is? Let's see. Oh, interesting. All right, let's go to let's go to the task and the um, task details page. Okay, so we're gonna this uh, furnace uh, general service, and you can click on the pencil icon to edit. Um, and if you don't want to do it yourself or you don't know how to do it yourself, you can also find local services um, up top there. And this brings you to a uh, Google Maps page um, and it searches for any, you know, the, the keyword for those ah. services. So you can find any service providers close to you, uh, close to the address of the home um, to do the service for you. All right. So once you've completed this task, you can open the completion section and the date completed is already there. You can put in the service provider, Bob, or your neighbor. <laughs> um, put in the phone number or details and uh, come in, did a nice job. And the total cost, uh, we charge you hundred bucks. And the next recurring date is set um, by default from um, the the, the preset the frequency that you made when you added a new home. And you can also edit that at any time, um, but you can change the next recurring date as well um, if you need that flexibility. And let's go ahead and save this. And yeah, and so you can see that that task um, on August 26 uh, is now completed and grayed out. And you can also find the next recurrence um, instance for that task in the future. Cool, and on to art. Great, thanks, Chloe. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take you through the navigation bar, which is in the top right corner of our menu. This is where we're gonna navigate through our application. Uh, we have seven elements on the nav bar. The first element is the calendar link. So clicking on this will take you back to the main view where we first started on our calendar which is also where we would go if we clicked on the Tasker logo in the top left corner of the app. Uh, the next item down in the nav bar is the homes, which uh, Chloe also had taken us to earlier. This is where we can modify our homes and add and remove items and tasks from those homes and also deactivate or reactivate them. The next item on the nav bar is our reports menu. Uh, this is really home to our data analysis platform. Here we can view real-time charts, dashboards, all, both of which are um, really based on collective user data in the system. And in this case, we have one existing report, uh, the cost to date report, which is just one example of how we can use the data that's in our system to, to benefit the user. In this case, we have uh, a chart that uh, tracks our expenses over time. And as we make uh, completions on our home tasks. We enter in costs, just as Chloe demonstrated, and that's what feeds this graph in particular. We really can imagine, it's not hard to imagine um, how easy it would be to create so many more reports, um, expense rep forecasts, home-to-home uh, -home expense comparisons, and probably one of the more beneficial ones is uh, to help the user would be able to rank popular service providers by cost based on what all of our other users are experiencing. So we hope that all of this crowdsource data not only pro proves valuable to our users, but also potentially can open doors to future collaboration with service providers and insurance companies. The next link down in the nav bar is our resources link, uh, which Donna referred to earlier. This is a searchable table that is a list of common maintenance tasks and their industry recommended uh, maintenance schedules. 
This list is what actually feeds the creation of our home or modifying home when you saw that list of items and tasks in it. So this is an evergreen list and as it evolves, it will continue to feed our app uh, with those items. The next item down in the nav bar is our account edit where you'll go to change your personal account uh, details. You can modify your first and last name, your email address that's associated with your account and also change your password. Uh, the next item down in the nav bar is the settings menu. Uh, here users can save their favorite filter preferences. Uh, the next button down is a trigger for a reminder email. So in addition to receiving regular email notifications from Tasker, a user can manually trigger a, email, a reminder email to themselves of anything that's upcoming or overdue. So Ben has an example in his mailbox of a typical email you might receive from Tasker, uh, complete with a button that will take you to the Tasker app further below, but it reminds you of your tasks that are overdue or upcoming. And then the last uh, little button there in the settings menu is the ability to integrate uh, your tasker calendar with your personal calendar. So this uh, generates a link for you to use and share with others. Uh, that is a direct connection to your personal ICS file. And then the last item on the nav bar is the logout button, which really needs no introduction and logs you out, takes you to our main landing page. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna finish up our time today with a bit of an overview of the tech stack and um, some key learnings for our team. This was like most teams in the Evolvi program, it was a MERN stack app with some third party NPM packages installed. And um, I think the most prominent uh, notable part of our tech array was an original package that kind of developed over the course of this project and mainly developed by me in order to just help with consistency throughout the project. And um, anytime that there's a form taking user input, any of those detail pages that are editable by clicking on that pencil icon, they're all the same package. And under the hood, it uses React hook form and styled components. And I'm actually on the verge of publishing this to the NPM registry. And We'll see how the community responds to that. That was a really, uh, was a great part of the tech in this project for me. And some learnings together as a team on the tech side. The last couple of weeks has been um, really about bug fixing and the complexity with creating new homes, updating them, and making sure that that recurring time based on the industry standards um, goes into the, the next task after you complete it. And so there were tons of bugs, um, lots of yeah, dramatic increase in complexity just in the last couple of weeks. And so that was something for us to get used to with the QA process and um, more experience throughout the full stack for us, understanding that um, the whole stack comes together to create value and keep a user engaged and uh, keep exceeding those expectations. Some advanced React, uh, we ended up writing a lot of our own hooks, React hooks to deliver functions, uh, a lot of reusability using hooks, and um, getting to learn, getting to know the React lifecycle is really important um, in that <clears throat> responsive web page. Um, between the team in the essential area of our learnings, uh, big focus in the Evolve U program as a whole, we really um i feel like we we didn't dive into development with too much haste we, we did a really good job uh, planning together and having those discussions having healthy disagreements um learning to kind of leave leave something be if it's not right time to solve it yet um and then you know solving it weeks down the road when the time comes. And so that was a big part of our learnings. We fully embraced the agile methodology as a team. Um, user centric was really, really important to us. Um, we also practiced working with a designer, uh, Chloe being the design focused member of the team. We did wireframing for every page in the app. Um, and then lastly, some future opportunities for this app and especially uh, monetizing include 
user types. So service providers being able to bill through the app and offer and book, um, that's going to play into some of that data, data analysis, um, getting users the most popular service providers, that kind of thing. And then actually partnering with insurance brokers to offer lower premiums. People are managing their properties with our app. Um, it's a big opportunity that we could see down the road with this. Um, and what, lastly, thanks to the Evolve U team, the Inception U team. Um, this has been it's been an incredible experience. And working with Tony as our Scrum Master product owner was a treat. So uh, thanks to everybody and thanks for your time.